And tonight, guess what we've got on the bench? Yet another laser cutter. These just keep coming, and I think, well, why not us to check them out here on this channel and so you guys can offer your opinions too. Anyway, uh, this is the longer, uh, no, this is the flying bear, flying bear uh, 10 watt laser cutter. So we'll see how it stacks up. And at the same time, I'm still testing out the Ender 3 V2 Neo. And uh, these are new keycaps uh, or key supports for the Apollo Disky project because this thing is printing so high quality. I thought, what the hey, let's uh, try reprinting those so there's less friction and <laughs> they're perfect. This, this thing, uh, I love it. It just works. If you're ever instead of putting one of these laser cutters or, or a 3D printer together that has belts that you've got to fish through the aluminum extrusion, a good pair of these electronics tweezers, these things are dirt cheap, I buy them by the three pack. They, they're really easy for fishing things through. They, uh, they're really handy for a lot of fishing things. And a lot of uses in the lab. Other than a little bit of stringing, which isn't bad for that many verticals, they came out beautiful. That's incredible. This printer really does amazing work. Ooh, had to walk away from this laser halfway through last night, partly because I ran out of time and partly because I got too frustrated with doing everything twice. Either I can't read instructions or these instructions aren't too good, but you'll see it in the review video. This thing though is going to be a surprise. Uh, it was a surprise to me what I'm seeing next in the instructions and I think this thing's going to be pretty cool. I, I think I underestimated it. I am pretty darn excited for this one. Finally going to have a quad that's not made of cheap eBay banged junk for once in my life. We have the real deal right from Rotor Riot. Comes with an installation guide for the props, quick start, <laughs> really basic stuff. But this is the Skyliner dribs frame and uh, it looks awesome. I am excited to try this out. Wait, what? It is not off to a good start. It's tight, but go axe is still spinning inside the nut. Uh, I'm assuming their 3D printed bracket here is is holding back the nut from tightening all the way. I'm gonna have to fix that, but I hope they didn't run it like that very long. That'll toast the VTX in a heartbeat. Hmm. Really on yeah, that's sad. Okay. Whoever Mar is might want to be pay a little closer attention to your VTXs and stuff. But uh, other than that it looks pretty awesome. What a cool looking frame. I'm gonna hook this up to Betaflight and pull everything out of it. I'm assuming it's Betaflight that's on it. Uh, we'll find out and uh, maybe get this thing out and give it a fly. Just taking some shots of a new quad before, uh, well, before I potentially wreck it. This is my one light set up for doing these little fun project shots now. It looks pretty cool, eh? I kind of like it. It's a lot of fun. I actually updated my trusty QX7 radio. I love this thing. I updated uh, Open Open TX last night, so I'd have the newest uh, for Lewis scripts, and then I also uploaded my TBS module. I set the location by accident, and it dropped it down to 25 milliwatts. It took me hours to figure out how to get it back. Tasty tidbit: if you just mash this button until the light changes, it resets it back, so you can set the location again and get your 250 milliwatts back. But uh, yeah, all updated, ready to fly.
managed to sneak out and give this quad a try, I hope. Uh, got it all set up and with any luck, it'll fly half decent. I don't know, we'll find out. Great first flight. Fun little update today, testing out the, my new filament dryer or mm, keep dryer. <laughs> we'll see how it works. I really like this. So I reached out to Sane Smart because I was going to order this anyway. And I thought, well, I thought I'd see if they wanted to take part in a review because honestly, I love the Sane Smart products. I've bought tons of them over the years. Just had the quad out for a rip and, uh, no worse for wear. Didn't even ding a prop. Recharging the Run Cam 5 and downloaded all the footage. Came out great. It's got a little P-term oscillation to it. Um, I don't think their tune is perfect from Rotor Riot, among other things. So you'll see on the video for that. But lots of fun. And uh, dug out some TBS receiver and a Mortal T antenna to retrofit an older quad up to a long range 900 megahertz. You guys will remember Blue Falcon quad that I made, one of the old 210s. Still works good. It's time to give it a new lease on life. Time to bring it into a 900 megahertz radio system. Uh, they run on the ISM band 915 megahertz, I believe. Uh, really, really long range with the Crossfire system. So we'll add that with the Immortal T antenna. And yeah, should be nothing to it, I hope. With any luck, if the screws all come out, we'll be all set. One thing I've learned over the years is gear doesn't matter. Your FPV gear, this stuff is years and years old and I still have a blast with it anytime I go out. I don't need the newest gear to have some fun. I like this older gear, these old red bottoms and um, the old be all heli. ESC's uh, one shot 125 they're running so definitely not new but they work. Did I mentioned how much I love the Crossfire system. This is the Crossfire Nano and this tiny little receiver is good for probably a little over 30 kilometers and uh, such a tiny prize package, full telemetry, everything. Incredible. Electronics Project, slide over to PCBWay and check out some of the group projects that are going on there. They've got a pretty cool sponsorship program and tons and tons of electronics and drone projects there for you to download or have PCBWay fabricate them themselves. Check out PCBWay.com. This larger rectangular clear heat shrink comes in way more handy than you'd think especially in RC stuff. Uh, you get the high shrink rate stuff, uh, just eBay China, and uh, it works really, really good. Jobs like this anyway. TPU and zip ties. What a wonderful combination. And let's go this way. 
great for RC. Sure makes it so much easier. I thought about retrofitting the video system, but this one works fine, so I'm just going to steal this adapter from the Speedy B because this has always been a kinked up mess on here. We'll see if this one works a little better. Just a little snug. Yes. Much, much better. And it's blue. I think I made this quad four years ago now in the in memory of JC. And uh, yeah, it's still, still doing the business. I should really come up with a better way of mounting that FPV camera than uh, it's supported with hot glue, <laughs> but it has one one fastener through the bottom. I guess don't fix what ain't broke, I suppose. It hasn't broken yet. TPU mount, our antennas out of the way of our props. They uh, won't flex up into that. And uh, yeah, should do the trick. Nice. Hit the bind button. Way we went, I'm using the uh, smoke stopper to, uh, well, because I'm lazy. Like everybody, you don't want to take your props off. And uh, if you use the smoke stopper, immediately if the motors draw anything, they'll, uh, it'll just light up and they can't, they can't move. So 25% and we're updating. The Crossfire stuff is so easy. You just press a button, it says, do you want to update your receiver? Why, yes I do. And away it goes. But yeah, take your props off. <laughs> like that, we're done. Put our receiver back in our stack and I might conform we'll code it too. So check this out now. We should have a whole lot more telemetry. Scroll down. RSSI, pitch, roll, yeah, we got all the goodies. So we have bi-directional communication with the quad, with the long range system, and we're all set. Just gotta put a little dab of hot glue back on the connections and uh, she's ready to fly.